not accept what happened. I mean, do we have to wait till the hammer and sickle is on the American flag before we stand up to this guy? I think what we have are ignoramuses, billionaires, um, and a few generals. This is pretty frightful stuff. Um, you have loads of people who have never been in government, who don't understand the difference between business and government. And we have a president-elect now who has basically matched some of these key talking points in Russian propaganda to undermine our system. We're talking about a candidate who's lost in a historic way in terms of the popular vote, but clearly won in the Electoral College. Is this something of a national emergency? Yeah. We call out the National Guard to surround the inauguration. That's unbelievable. All right, with us now to provide perspective, Ebony Williams and Trish Reagan from the Fox Business Network. Changing my opinion on this uh, used to bother me, Ebony, and I used to react to some of it. Uh, and now I think what has happened is these people are so overwrought. Hmm that almost every fair-minded American doesn't listen to them anymore. It doesn't matter what they say about Trump. They just turn them off or walk away or cancel their newspaper subscription. I think a lot of people are with you, Bill, but there are a lot of people that do listen. I'm going to tell you why. There are a lot of people in this country, Bill, who not only didn't vote for Donald Trump, but they feel that the media not doing what you just showed there uh, and, and accepting the result of a Trump presidency are what they call legitimizing it. And they find that dangerous. They say that any time the media is willing to accept and move forward business as usual on the presidency of Donald Trump, they are complicit in the rhetoric that was but displayed he, on the campaign okay, trail. That's their position. Do you realize how yeah. insane that position is? <laughs> An election. We had an sure, election. We did. He won the election. Votes were counted. So now, sure. if, if you don't try to undermine him, you're uh, un-American. I mean, yep. that's just crazy. But hammer and sickle, mm -hmm. okay, so uh, I don't even want to mention her name. She thinks that, that Trump's going to make a communist nation out of America. Then the other guy is going to be a fascist. The general's going to take over seven days in May. Tanks are going to roll down La Brea Boulevard in L.A. Okay, they're hysterical. So I'm saying this again. Nobody's listening to this. Nobody's listening. You know, well, they certainly didn't listen during the election, right? Because right. Donald Trump is going to be the president. Yet uh, the media would have had you thought something entirely different that he didn't have uh, any shot at all. I think you know what's interesting about it to me too, as a journalist, is I look at this and it, it seems as though it, there used to be a school of thought that you should at least pretend you were unbiased. Mm -hmm. Now. There's no. a school of thought in the media that is completely biased and, and so much so that, you know, God forbid you actually say something in defense of Donald Trump, they'll pile on in a really extreme way. Yeah, well, I think that's broken down now. The, the rules of journalism, and that's because of the Internet, where there are no rules, so that the traditional uh, say, oh, well, they do it, we can do it, and lay it off on them. Yeah, but but the New York Times, I'm, right, I'm with, with their recent hire, they, they hired a guy from police. Oh, yeah, who yeah. was, a, Look, you know, a self-described hack, actually. But if people don't know at this point what you're getting when you read the New York Times, I can't help you. If you watch MSNBC, if you don't know what you're getting, I can't help you. Um, but the ratings for MSNBC and CNN have plummeted, mm. plummeted sure. um, after the election, which again says to me, people, you know, they, they just, they've had it. They'd rather watch uh, the Andy Griffith show. Opie, by the way, he still ate. That was like 50 years ago, and he still ate. <laughs> and still know, looks good, Bill. Well, here's the thing, right? I think you guys are, are really kind of making an important point, which is I don't know that America, Bill, no longer can make the distinction between traditional objective news, the journalism that Trish is referring to, or opinion shows, right? So I don't have no, a problem with Joy it. on the Come View, on. Bill. Everybody knows that's, the opinion She's show. paid to give her opinion, right, on the View. So that's okay. The woman who you would not name on the view. Look, <laughs> the reason I don't mind the opinion. Right. It's but it's hatred. masquerading as, it's as the news. Hatred. Look, am I going to watch the David Duke show? All right, on some kind of cable access? No, I'm not. Why? Because some a hater. people would. But some people would watch that. I don't Bill. care about Absolutely, that. they would. I'm just would. talking about. But I sure. wouldn't, and most people wouldn't, sure. because he's a hater. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? If you want a reinforcement of your point of view, Bill, people will watch no, no, it. No, it's absolutely. the hatred that I object to, mm -hmm. not the point of view. Mm -hmm. All right? It's the hatred. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch it. I, I hear what you're saying. So you see that, you know, there are pockets of that on the right, for example, David Duke. And mm -hmm. what you're equating that to, basically, is seeing some kind of similarity there on the left, that there are members of the left right now in the media that hate Donald Trump so much they want to see him fail, and they are doing everything to delegitimize 
legitimize sure. him and with the hope that somehow it's like he doesn't gorilla, make it to the White like, House look, January It's 20th. like guerrilla warfare. It's like the Viet Cong, all right? And so now you have a guy who is elected president, and we're just going to attack. A Attack and then no rules. We're going to say anything. We're going to make stories up. But it's irresponsible. Yeah, right. I mean, I look at you know Paul Krugman, for sure. example, the economic columnist at the New York Times. Why he would said, you the even market, read him? <laughs> the market. I read job, it all. Bill. I like to know all, all it. of it's it that's job. out there. But in other words, he was saying the market's going to tank. It's never mm -hmm. going to recover when Donald Trump. It, you know, he was actually, a little. He was a little wrong about I mean, it. Trish, the, 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 he was writing this the night of the election, and yet look at where we are. Up more than eight percent. But here's the thing. What if there's a piece of media that speaks to the right and confirms that, a piece of media that speaks to the left and confirms that, and then in the middle is actual journalism, actual objective, fact-based journalism. It's almost disappeared. Would that satisfy you? If we could but go it, back to those good old times? You can't go back. It's all over. Okay. It, it's all over. But that makes the me sad. The media will never go back that makes me sad. to the days of Walter Cronkite and all of that, where there was a semblance of fairness. Bye.